Thanks again for joining us. This is Sippin' Tea with Nat and Z. I'm Nat. And I'm Z. How you doing, Z? I'm okay. Um, you know, I had a little procedure, uh, medical procedure this week. So I've been a little loopy. <laughs> <laughs> so to our listeners, forgive me in advance if I sound a little off. Because <laughs> I'm still a little loopy. But other than that, yeah, I mean... <laughs> This week has been great. I took a week off from work just to kind of, um, you know, recharge and regroup. Even though we're in a pandemic, um, doesn't mean that you, and you may be working from home, it doesn't mean that you still shouldn't use your PTO and take the time off that may be desperately needed. Mm -hmm. So I did that for myself this week and it was definitely... Yes, it was definitely great. I got to start back up tomorrow. I'm not looking forward to that. (laughs) But hey, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. It is. Great, great, great. Glad to hear. I wanted to say thanks, everybody, for tuning in again for us. It's uh, episode eight. And our episode today is called Friends. How many of us have them? Now, for those of you familiar with hip hop, you should already know where this song comes from. So I hope you're tuned in. Yes. And for the newbies and the, what are the millennials, check it out. Look it up. Great song. Great yeah. song. <laughs> Gen Z, Gen Y, whatever, <laughs> Alpha, Generation, wherever we at right now. Whichever you is. Look it up. Whichever you is, yes. just check it out. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll open up a whole other portal to your life. And you can appreciate what you yes, think of grown folk are listening to. Just so, you know. Hello. Good tidbit. morning. Right. And please and thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So what's going on for the tea of the day? (laughs) So disclaimer, once again, we are not tea experts. You should talk to your doctor when drinking herbal tea as there are potential side effects when mixed with some medications. Uh, Herbal tea should not be a substitute for medication. We're not affiliated with any of these companies, nor are these endorsements. So let's get into the tea on the table. All right now. So tea on the table. We're talking about friends, gatherings, and how those interactions develop. And teas are perfect for a tea party. I love me a tea party. I'm such a girly girl. I collect teacups. I love tea, obviously, because here we're here with the show. But um, in the spirit of having groups getting together and your friends getting together, well, um, basically we're looking at Whether you call it high tea or afternoon tea, a tea party is a great way to socialize. Relax with your friends and hang out. Um, I love it. It's And the little cucumber sandwiches that you can get sometimes with the little tea party. (laughs) (laughs) They're great. They're great. So just thinking about, you know, tea is largely overlooked by hostesses putting on a tea party. So we wanted to give you guys some great teas, uh, too. Favorites that are well-suited for your next gathering. And these two are some of my favorite teas. First is Earl Grey Tea. It's a black tea with a citrusy flavor. It pairs well with scones, madeleine cakes, and shortbread cookies. Yum, yum, yummy. Yes. (laughs) Our Jilling Tea, which is from India, has a distinctive fruity flavor. Pairs, uh, Pairs well with savory afternoon tea foods like Cucumber sandwiches <laughs> and soup. <laughs> and these are yes. both, both black teas. So um, for my uh, background, we have black tea with milk or cream or condensed milk or what have you. However you choose to partake, that's great. But to add some additional flavor yes. to or kick to your tea, kick it up a notch. You should purchase uh, these coffee sugars called from, they're called just coffee sugars, right, Z? From the Milk Street Company. Well, they're from the Milk Street Company. Mm -hmm. They're just Mm -hmm. called coffee sugars, I believe. Coffee sugars, okay. Mm -hmm. And they're infused with spice blends that can also be used in tea. They're quite tasty. Z uh, has had them, and she loves them. 
They can also be used in desserts, yes, yes. oatmeal, and yogurt. And Z recommended the caramel brulee flavor, which is like white chocolate, vanilla, and cinnamon. L, um, in addition to the burnt sugar, orange spice, which is orange, vanilla, and cinnamon. Z, you would like, want to tell us about yes. your ex- tea experience? Yes. So these are really good. And actually a friend recommended them to me. And, you know, I drink coffee and tea. So these were a great purchase for me because I could use them in either um, beverage that I choose for the morning or the afternoon or even possibly the evening. So Mm -hmm. the burnt sugar, orange spice. Oh, my gosh. I swear I drank that um, this morning with some Earl Grey tea and a little bit of milk. Oh, my God. It tastes so good. It was so good. It was so good. And it definitely is, I think, good for a tea party. Like after we're, you know, mm-hmm. out of this COVID mess, or even if you have a quarantine and you want to sit down with them and have a, mm-hmm. a, a social distancing tea party, I think that these are great additions. Um, you can buy a sampler pack. Again, it's the Milk Street Company. If you Google it, it'll come up. It's called the Christopher Kimball Milk Street Company. Oh, okay. Um, okay. If you, you the sample, yes. So the it comes in a five pack. Um, some of them though, I did try with the tea. I'll be perfectly honest. They aren't paired well with tea. They're definitely (laughs) paired better with (laughs) coffee. (laughs) There was like a, a Mexican chocolate one, a Mexican mocha chocolate one, but that absolutely did not pair well with the tea. So it was good in my coffee. And actually when it gets a little cooler and I whip out the hot chocolate, I think it would be it would be absolutely mm-hmm. delicious in that. That's so a good idea. if you're interested, it does come in a five pack. Um and it's five either five or six pack is a sampler pack. It comes with different flavors. So definitely if you just want to kick it up a notch, it's sugar mixed with the seasonings and it definitely brings and elevates your tea um to a whole nother level. So sounds lovely. Definitely, um, if you're in the market for something new, try that. Yeah. And if you listeners out there um, do try it, please let us know um, and give us a review. We've had some other listeners yes. in the past give us their reviews of the teas that we've recommended. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a shoot us a text on or DM us or whatever. We'd love to hear how you're enjoying the the recommendations we've had. Yes, absolutely. Please do that. So let's go ahead and uh, get into some hot tea. Um, There were Mm. some stories out there this week that I saw, but I wasn't too interested (laughs) in a lot of them. And I'm sure (laughs) some of you probably wouldn't have been interested in them either. So I picked the ones that I thought would resonate with with the listeners the most. So the first thing that um, I found was the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. After 30 years, um, after the first episode, the Banks family are all back together, including mm. da, 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 the OG <laughs> Aunt Viv. Okay. What? She is in the building. Yes. Get out of so, here. You know, it's if you follow, for real. Yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> the shit you thought you wouldn't see, right? <laughs> so if you followed Janet Hubert and if you followed the Fresh Prince, you would know that she had you know OG on Viv had some choice words for Will Smith quite she a wasn't few. his biggest fan mm, yes mm. she blamed him for uh being fired from the show oh and she stated on numerous occasions that she hated him <laughs> Oof. um and she declared I believe in 2011 that she would never never be a part of um Ooh. a reunion show so then this is a classic never say never yes mm-hmm. it's classic never say never um, now I don't know what her role in the reunion is going to be. Um, all I know is that Will Smith recently posted a photo of them on IG and it appears that they buried the hatchet cause they were like smiling, laugh, laughing. So, mm-hmm. um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, the reunion, um, is expected to air sometime around Thanksgiving on HBO max. So oh. be on the lookout for that. Okay. Tonight we have another OG OG bam, bam, uh, bam, bam, battle bam, bam, going on. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Patty Labelle, yes. Miss Gladys Knight, yes, be in the versus battle, Absolutely. honey. So mm-hmm. I asked uh, for my friends, my social media friends, come on, help your aunties, your big mamas, your mamas, <laughs> your grandmamas, whoever. The original aunties. Help crew. them set up the internet. 
Yes. Yes. Help please. them with the internet. Uh, please. I, I asked, but everybody said in a resounding no. <laughs> they choose themselves. <laughs> They're choosing themselves this Sunday. You can't leave them out there. You can't leave them out there. Like and I understand. Right. I understand. So, um, you know, I got quite a kick out of the memes um, mm-hmm. that have been floating around. Uh, with regards to this battle, you had the starter kit. Uh, the one that took me out uh, was the, the starter pack with white diamond perfume or or Jean Ate. <laughs> yes. The cigarette pouch. But the cigarette pouch can only have Virginia Slims or Benson Hedges in it. If it has Newport <laughs> News, you can't do that. Okay. Newport News is for the newer generation. We got to have Benson and Hedges. Newport. And Virginia Newport. Slims. Okay. No Newport. You gotta have the clear rug runner. Everybody gotta have a clear rug runner. Yes. No. And, it, and it has to be secured drink- to the carpet with the little thingy. Yes. It doesn't move, yes. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. You gotta have a pink champagne. Okay. Get your pink champagne. Get your glasses. What? And okay. your fashion fair foundation. Please, okay. <laughs> that fashion fair. And the lipstick to boot, please. Because you know that's like yes. root red. So, whatever that color, mahogany, sunshine yes. color, but that whatever it is they got. You gotta get that, you gotta get that fashion fair. Yes. And I'm telling you, this might be outside of the 112 jagged edge one because I am like a huge 112 fan. Mm-hmm. This might be the battle that I have been waiting for my whole life. <laughs> I mean, no disrespect to Gladys, because she got hits. But once Patty starts well, flapping them arms, <laughs> if she got shoes on, she's gonna take and them off. That shoes off. Point, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. You know, it's over. It's, o- it's, it's over. over. If she sings on my own, just pack it up. <laughs> just pack it up. Get on, go on and get on that midnight train to Georgia. Just Patty. pack it up. Pack it up and go. It's, <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> go on and get on that train. So. Yeah, it's go ahead, but I'm looking forward to that. Um, Chris Evans. So the reason why I want to talk about Chris Evans, um, if you don't know who Chris Evans is, he recently was in Ooh. Knives Out, which is an excellent movie. Yes. I give it four and a half tea leaves out of five. If you have not seen it, Very and Captain America. He plays yeah. Captain America, mm-hmm. and 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 a nice looking. Uh, he is man. A cute or, he, yeah, I think he's a so very nice looking. Yes, so. The reason why I'm mentioning him is because he's been um, in the the, the news. Uh, well, a part of him has been in the news. Oh. Um, so he was sharing a, he posted a video of his family, I think, playing a game. And at the end of the video, there was like a, a image of a photo roll. It looked like, like, you know, maybe like a screenshot of the photos in your mm-hmm. iPhone or something. And there appeared to be a picture of his penis. Oh. And of course, you know. Hey, the the Twitterverse went wild. Everybody was like, a, you know, oh, my gosh, a picture wow. of a penis. But here's why I want to talk about it. Not because of that so much, but what started to happen was his fans started to use the hashtag. Um, what was the hashtag? Uh, hashtag Chris Evans, hashtag Chris Evans leak to not actually share the photo of his penis, but to share more wholesome photos of him because he suffers from severe anxiety so much so that he had at one point said that he was not going to take the role of Captain America because oh, wow. it was just he thought it was too much. too much for him and right and I thought that okay that's great that the fans understand that he has this level of anxiety and maybe having this photo out here may trigger that cause him some issues and so I applaud that but yeah. here's where I have an issue it seems like, and I know that if you're a man and you're listening to this, you might think that I have <laughs> an issue. I don't. But I just want equal and fair treatment when it comes to the mm. same things, right, that happen to women, that right. happen to men. So when there were hackers who were literally stealing nude photos mm. of women, right, oh, yes. and then posting them on the internet, mm-hmm. people were blaming these women. Oh, you should have never took nude photos of yourself. Quick to oh, say you're that. a star. You should have known that you were going to get hacked. You mm-hmm. should have never let yourself get hacked. Oh, you are so wrong. You're the one. You're to blame. And I just am saying this to say, we need to do better by women. 
Yeah. I'm glad that you're doing that for Chris Evans. I really am. And I applaud that. But can we also afford the same grace when it happens to a woman? And yes. can we also extend that grace when it happens to a woman of color? Because Hello. we know when it happens to a woman of color, it's even worse. So like let's just times. all be collectively mindful of that. Please. I just ask, like, let's just do that. Just, let's, let's just be, let's just treat women fairly. That's all. That's all I ask. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, I just want to give a few things that I'm listening to and what I'm watching. Um, Usher has a new song out called Bad Habits. Solid three and a half tea leaves out of mm-hmm. five for me. I mean, he's just talking about being a man whore and trying to get out of that <laughs> habit. So nothing, nothing new. Well, um, you know, he's a work in progress. At least he yeah. he's acknowledged it. <laughs> yes, at least he's acknowledged it. Um, Turntables by Janelle Monet. I give that a four. Four and a half tea leaves out of five. Mm-hmm. And Hit Different by SZA and Ty Dollar Signs. Give that a solid four leaves. It almost got five. I love SZA. I just don't ever understand what she's saying. She's one of those whisper R&B singers that are out now. It's like yes. her and Jeanette. What is the name? Janae Aiko. Janae Aiko. Yeah. I, yeah. Them two. I, they whisper a lot. Um, <laughs> you could whisper like... Sh- you could whisper... But if you're going to whisper, be like Sade and make it smooth. Yes. So it's it's oh. like, you know, I have mumble rappers. I consider them mumble R&B singers. I don't know what they're saying, but I love them. But right. I love them. And the other reason why I didn't give it a full five is because I don't like Ty Dollar Sign. So yeah. I just don't. Um, Fair enough. And then what I'm watching is, is Cobra Kai. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. This is the cheesiest show ever. But me and my husband love it if you love karate kid if you're a fan of like cheesy 80 movies this is the show for you and it is it is so Cobra hilarious Kai, I love karate it. kid <laughs> yes and and karate kid right danny was the he was the hero right mm-hmm. johnny right. was the villain oh yes. oh how how have the tables turned what? how have the tables turned they're not telling them to put them in a body bag it. anymore johnny do not no no that. sweep well or sweep in the I'm leg. I'm not gonna give too much away, but I ain't gonna give too much away. I just say, oh, how the tables have turned. <laughs> and if you're looking for something, it is a half hour ish each episode. You can get through it. Me and my husband are almost finished the first season and we're going into season two. So definitely, definitely check that out. And that's all I have for hot tea of the day. All right. That's quite a bit. So everybody, stay tuned. Get that Patty LaBelle and Gladys Knight on. We're about to get ready to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll jump right into our Tea Time segment. And we are back. So let's get into this Tea Time. As we said... This topic for today is friends. How many of us have them, right? Friends. Get it, girl. How many many of us have them? them? Friends. Friends. (laughs) The ones we can depend (laughs) on. (laughs) Y'all young young bucks look into that. It's a dope song. Anyway. (laughs) And we all know y'all old heads are sit, sitting there singing along with us, too. So exactly. Shout, shout out to y'all for that support. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking at friendships. And, you know, there are four levels of friendships. And we all know all friendships are not equal. So looking at these stages, there's the acquaintance associate, the casual friend, the close friend, and the intimate friend, Right. So if we're looking at your acquaintance, those are occasional interactions that you experience with a person like a friend of a friend, a coworker, a sorority member you see maybe at a chapter meeting. Uh, you know, they have general knowledge about you, but not anything too intimate. Moving on to the casual friend, those are folks, you know, you may plan interactions with in the beginning stages. You guys may hang out a little more. You know, you have common interests and you guys go to different events like your outings may be event based. Um, and purpose-based, so to speak. And you become, you know, more invested emotionally with everybody and finding out finding out if that person is doing well, where their head is at, and just kind of doing a check-in with them, right? 
And then looking at your close friends, these are folks that you're emo- completely more so invested, much more invested in emotionally and personally. You guys share intimate details and more personal details with one another. You help support each other, accomplishing goals and just anything that you're really trying to make sure that they're okay with mentally and physically. You know, they're family members, you're cool with them and you're there to support them through different life changes. And you've seen each other at your best and worst, which can also serve for bonding experiences to get you to that next level of being the intimate friend. Those, these, you know, a lot of us call our sister friends. So these are the friends that you pretty much have designated as family, you know, for yourself. And if you don't, if you don't have a sister, these women become, and oh, also, we are mainly talking about women friends right now and and girlfriends, just so you know. So not to give any, you know, shade to the fellas, but right now we're just focusing on the ladies. Um, and you kind of like, you know, the deeper secrets, stuff that you, you're like, okay, I got your back, whatever you need. These are the friends that show up early to help you with an event and s- stay late or f- sleep over, or, you know, they show up in your house isn't clean and you can just walk in the door and it's like not a big deal. You know, it's not anybody that you prep for. It's just like, here I am. It is what it is. You may or may not have on a bra when you see them when they come over or you go to there. <laughs> <laughs> just real talk. you just like, look, it's not happening today. It is not happening today. <laughs> and, you know, you can also become vulnerable with them. I mean, so I would say like where we are, where me and Z are, we're on the, the intimate friends list. We've all we've known each other since we were 17, mm. I guess. Give or yeah, take. And we're that. in our, mm-hmm. you know, we're yeah. in our forties now. We've 40, been through right. a lot. You mm-hmm. know, we've been through marriages, relationships, you name it. Times, you know, calling people when you think they're having a breakdown, but they not. <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going back there? Yeah, we're going back I'm there. just Sorry. like, but I appreciate that though, because he's like, <laughs> I think she, I, but whatever, but it's just like those type of things and how we sit here and talk about that. Or we, we can sit here and talk about different experiences of how we were when we were 20 and we were in a different mindset and we saw ourselves differently right. as women versus how we are now, you know? So, right. and you know, when I was doing, you know, some of the research for this, I was looking through the list and I said, okay, there's four levels and there really are four levels, right? And mm-hmm. then when you start to look at the four levels and look at the friends in your life, you may start to realize, hmm, there are some people that I thought were close friends that actually are casual friends, right? Or there are people that I thought were acquaintances that really are more my casual friends. Yes. Um, And mm-hmm. I think these levels are important and they're always important to revisit and they're always important to revisit with the people in your life, right? Definitely. I, I look at the tribe that we have and I think the tribe that we have for me is a mix of close friends and intimate friends. And you know how I am with my friendship Mm -hmm. for a very long time. I was team, no new friends. I was, I didn't want any new friends. Mm -mm. I had my tribe. I found my people and that's Mm -hmm. all I really wanted to be involved with. I didn't have any outside friends outside of the tribe that we have. Right. And I had to learn how to get out of that. And I'm glad because I have a lot of very good casual friends, I would say. Um, and these ca- some of these casual friends have actually transitioned mm-hmm. into close friends. Um, I will also say, looking at this and then looking at my tribe and revisiting, there are some people that mm-hmm. I thought were intimate and close friends that may have to fall back to the casual friends, yes. right level. Because mm-hmm. we're just not on that level anymore because our friendship has changed over the years. And that's, and that's fine. okay. And that's, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I, I would say that is so important because the, the levels of friends, it, it's in kind of goes in sync with the sense, the friends for different seasons. Some, some friends are in your friend, your life for the entire, your entire adult, you know, from, birth till you're grown old right and other folks just come Mm -hmm. in for college some come in just for I needed you help for you know grad school for marriage you know stuff like that it 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 definitely people serve different purposes in your life and it's not a good or bad thing it's just a way to help you develop and see yourself and see yourself grow and see how you can accept things or 
stand on your own and, you know, stand up for yourself and say, you know what, this is not the type of friendship that I need in my life. Exactly. The person is just sucking from me and there's nothing, it has to be a partnership. And if it's, if I'm just pouring into that person and that person isn't pouring back into me, then that's not a friendship. That's an ex- exactly just a, oh, I would say, I wouldn't say acquaintance. It's just one of those things. that's not mutually beneficial at all. Well, you know, I, I always, I've classified and I tell this, I say this to everybody, all, all of, you know, the tribe that mm-hmm. I, I feel like relationships, whether they're intimate or whatever type of relationship it is we're talking about. But in this case, friendships, they're like bank accounts, right? You have to, you can withdraw, but you also have to deposit. If always, you're in a, a yeah. friendship, that's always, you feel like it's always a withdrawal, right? And it's always a withdrawal, but there's nothing being deposited back in. At some point, what happens, right? If you have a bank account that you just keep taking money out of and you don't put anything. But <laughs> overdraft. In, overdraft. Overdraft. You go into the negative, in mm-hmm. the red. You're, you know, why do you want a friendship like that? Right. And why do you want to hold on? I think a lot of times we hold on to this notion of, well, I have to have intimate friends and I have mm-hmm. to have close friends. And if I let this person go, if I, if I say, you know what, this friendship has changed and we were close friends, but I think I have to kind of push this person right. back to a casual friend that somehow we are, mm. I don't know. We feel rude. obligated. Exactly. And, yeah. We feel obligated yeah. to a degree. And you shouldn't have to. I mean, you know, like we said, friendships ca- are, we are, here for a reason. They help you grow. Mm-hmm. But sometimes some health. friendships, they are. But sometimes some friendships can actually deplete you. And you have to mm. kind of, I implore everybody to look at these levels and say, okay, looking at the friends that I have in my life, if I had to categorize them, how would I categorize them? And am I mm-hmm. giving somebody, you know, putting somebody at a level that maybe really shouldn't be there anymore? Or am I holding somebody back who really mm-hmm. has shown me that they are a, a, a close friend or an intimate friend. But because right. of my insecurities or maybe my um, issues with developing friends in the past, I've kind of held them at uh, an arm's length. Definitely. So, I mean, that's definitely something that we all should should kind of think about. And um, manage your expectations and, you know, accordingly, I, I'm, too. I, yes, manage them accordingly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've had some friends change over the course of, you know, my, you know, I would say over the course of the last 15 years or so. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was something that was a little difficult for me because I realized that the, you know, the, with this one friendship in particular, I realized really didn't serve me well. It Mm -hmm. didn't benefit my life. It wasn't enhancing my life. I felt like I was always in constant turmoil with this person. Right. And so when the friendship ended, I really didn't feel bad about it. And that's when I knew that that relationship just wasn't serving me. Right. And I was okay with making that transition to say, hey, you know what? We we can be acquaintances, right? Mm-hmm. I don't wish you well. I don't dislike you. But this friendship just does not serve me anymore. And right. we are just not the people we were when we first met. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. And, and that's I, okay. So, and people really need to be with so being okay with that. It's a process and you may feel guilty. You may feel, you know, like I really should still try to work this out, but it's sometimes it's just not meant to be. They serve their it's season. Not. And it's not. And they have. And it's on. Yes. And then when you, when you, when you're looking at these levels, right, you might want to also take it to account the friends you actually do need in your life right when you're taking (laughs) stock of that and so you know here's a list of about nine friends we said you probably need in your life um the optimistic friend the reliable friend the work friend the down for whatever friend right those are the first four so Mm -hmm. you know the optimistic friend is the friend that's always going to help you see the brighter side and things optimistic Mm -hmm. they're just you know look yeah this may have happened but guess what Something greater is going to come down. Mm-hmm. The line. They're the person who's always going to be able, able to give you that sunny disposition that you may need to kind of push you further. The reliable friend. You're going to need somebody in your life that's reliable. If you need somebody who's going to be able to be, you, yes. you need somebody who's going to be able to be there for you. A friend yes. and that that is going to show up when it's mm-hmm. necessary, right? Mm-hmm. And when it's needed. Um, a work friend. I'll tell you. I was old school. My grandfather told me a long time ago, you don't go to work to make friends. You go to work to work. 
And so that has always stuck in my mind. So I went mm-hmm. to work when I first got my first professional job. I was like, I ain't got time for these people. I'm here to work. I ain't here to make friends. But once I got out of that, I met some great people, great mm-hmm. people um, that I'm friends with. I have a, a work BFF actually that doesn't work with me anymore, but we're still such good friends. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I'm glad that I opened myself up to her in that environment, right? Because right. sometimes work, could be a place where you don't really yeah. want to be be friendly with people. <laughs> right. But if you get that um, chance to be and it works out, it's a great thing. Yes. Um, the down for whatever friend, right? I have a down for whatever friend. And I mean, I feel like I'm the down for whatever friend. Whatever you're down for, let's go. We let's ride. Go. Like, let's go. I'm here for it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You have to have one of those friends, right? Yes. I think that, that, that gets friend. you into the best situations. <laughs> yes. And out of things you of never the worst expected. Situations. <laughs> yes. Hello. Hello. Exactly. Um, so then let's get into the next uh, five. You have a wise mentor. You have the polar opposite. You have the friend that will tell you what you need to hear. But you also have to have the friend that will tell you what you want to hear. Sometimes yes. you don't always need to hear. Yes. Sometimes yes. you don't want to hear what you need to hear. Right. You just need <laughs> someone to agree with hear. you. Exactly. <laughs> so you need both. That has to balance you out. Right? right. And then you have to have the Laverne to your Shirley what I could consider the, the bottom bitch. And <laughs> yeah. if you don't know what a bottom bitch is, it, get you one. <laughs> get you one. It's rooted in pimp lore. <laughs> so if you got to have a bottom bitch. If you don't have a bottom bitch, I don't know what you're doing in your life. I really right. don't. Because y'all um, you li- li- pretty much the- led a really calm life if you don't have at least one of them down to do whatever yes. friend, you know. Yes. And that's that's like I would say equivalent to your best friend, the person because mm-hmm. again, I have these rules. Y'all laugh at me that I have these rules. No, none of your friend has told none of your friends has told you a hundred percent of what's going on with them, what they've exactly. done in their lives. Nobody exactly. your, right. your your bottom bitch probably knows ninety percent of, of everything y- of everything. And right. it's okay. I think you should keep there are some things you need to keep to yourself mm-hmm. not to be shamed for but everybody don't need to know, to know ev- everything. everything is not for everybody exactly so your bottom bitch probably knows about 90 percent. so if you got yes. that person did you know oh she knows 90 percent. the next right. bottom bitch mm-hmm. so if, mm-hmm. so you know you have the friends that you need but hello oh. You got to yeah. dig into the friends that you don't. And Woo! some of y'all might Child. be listening to this and say, oh, I got that friend. Yep. And I consider her an intimate mm-hmm. or a close friend. And that bitch is probably more of an acquaintance or maybe yeah. not a friend at all. So who are the friends that you don't need? The habitual line stepper, mm-hmm. right? The one who does not respect your boundaries. Okay. If you got one of them, it ain't nothing to cut that bitch off. Okay. Cut it off. Cut off. <laughs> cut off. <laughs> yes. Okay. The that judgmental one. friend. Yeah, if you got one of those. one of those. They're not you your don't. friend. They could give you a point don't of view judge without me. judging you. Don't judge me. Judge your mama. Okay. <laughs> I don't need you in my life. <laughs> not judge your mama. The energy vampire. You know, the person oh, that comes around and just yes, sucks sucks energy. Everything. They don't have anything exciting. Great to talk about. It's just sad. They're just the inner. They're just energy. Like as soon as they walk into the room, the energy changes. Mm. And if you got one of them, it ain't nothing to cut that bitch off. Cut <laughs> off. Cut that off. 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 Debbie Downer, you got somebody oh. that's like you're like, hey, guess what? I just got my braces off today, and then they say, oh, really? Well, I'm four of my teeth fell out. Like if there's always somebody, there's <laughs> always every time you have something positive to say they come with something negative let it go yes let it go that's like that Um, that um character in the movie also the negative nancy Mm -hmm. oh you you know what i'm talking about now yeah downer yes Mm -hmm. yes yes negative nancy you got a negative nancy we all know a negative nancy Mm. if you're friends with a negative nancy might be time to cut a loose always see the glass half full um Yes, I can't. I can't be around. Negative people will shift your 
energy. I'm telling you. Completely. If you are around a negative person, it will shift it. Don't your don't vibe. let that person in your space. Mm, you don't need that. Girl. Mm-mm. The selfish friend. If you have somebody that's always me, 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 me. Mm. And then when it's time for you to be like, hey, how about me? And they're like, oh, oh, no, I, I can't. Or yeah. Mm-mm. 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 We have no Mm-mm. room for selfish friends. Not at all. We don't. We not we off that. We yes. don't have any room for selfish friends. Okay. Yes, you shouldn't do things with the expectation that somebody else is going to do something in return. Right. But you also, again, relationships are like bank accounts. If somebody is constantly withdrawing from you and not putting anything back, yes. you need to reevaluate that situation. Okay. Ooh, this one. Mm, the competitive friend. Let me tell you, if you got a friend that's competing with you for everything, let her go. I've dealt with that. And let Mm. me tell you, ain't ain't (laughs) nothing to cut that bitch off. (laughs) Cut them off. Because they will compete with you for everything. There's no no place place for it. In friendship. It's none. Competing with you for a man. Competing with you for a job. Mm. Competing with you for whatever. You bought a a, a, a five-bedroom house, they got to buy a six-bedroom house. Yes. You bought a a, a Honda, they got to buy the Tesla. They got to, <laughs> everything is a competition. They got yes. to always, they yes. got to win. If you have, have a, if you have a friend like that, cut them off. Not We're not, we off you. that. We're oh, No, we supporting not competing. No hate. Okay? No hateration. No hate. Toleration up in this dancery. Thank Hello. You. Mm. If you got the, the the copycat, aka the single white female, aka the single black female, at all and quickly because that'd Please. be crazy. If, if you get a haircut and then they come up the next day with the same haircut, <laughs> same color. Yo. Mm-mm. If she start wearing all your clothes, all of them, and bind up, no. Let it go. Let it go. Back away. You go get, you go and buy some shoes. The next day, that bitch got the same shoes. <laughs> and off. Quick, and off. fast, and in a Quick. hurry. Please. We'll be we seeing you on the six o'clock news. Yes. That's how people end up on Snap. Hello. <laughs> and the surface level friend. <laughs> Ooh, this one, this one will probably open some of your eyes. If this one opened my eyes, you may have some friends that you've known for about a good mm. 20, 30 years, maybe 10 years, and you realize you only know them on the surface. Yep. You don't really know them deep down. You don't really know them. If you can have right. that conversation, and I've had that conversation, like, damn, I really don't. I thought I knew, mm. and I really don't. Don't. If you're, ha- <laughs> if you're having that conversation, you might want to do some... Be like, revisiting wait a minute, yes, because yes. and I think the surface level friend out of all of these is the one that can be the most harmful, yeah, because they're never showing you their true, authentic self, so you have scary. no idea who you really are friends mm. with, which is scary. Very, you have no idea what they're actually capable like, of or not capable of. You understand what I'm saying? How do you trust someone that you only know on the surface? Yeah. If I don't, if I can't, if I can't dig down and get down and understand who you are underneath all of that stuff, mm-hmm. I can't be friends with you. And you have to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really sticking with this because a lot of us have probably come across this and mm-hmm. probably as you get older, because you yeah. realize maybe you've been friends with somebody for a very long time and you just don't, you don't yeah. know them at all. At um, all. That's that's not good. And that's something that you might want to kind of look at and reevaluate. Maybe you need to push that person to an acquaintance. Because mm. why would it matter? You only know them on the surface anyway. So Exactly. Exactly. And and speaking to to what Z was saying, like you know, you've known that person for 20, 30 years, and you really don't know them as well as you thought you did. Kind of flows into the next area that we wanted to touch on as far as how friendships, how friendships can change over time. Studies have shown that the older you get, the fewer friends you have. Hashtag facts. Oh, <laughs> Open Science <laughs> Journal found that many people start decreasing your friend pool, their friend pool around the age of 25. So usually like when you get out of college, 
um, or you got out of trade school or what have you, whatever your particular line of work or interests are. Um, and the areas that that it really becomes pronounced in is, like I said, you're not in college anymore. Your interests have changed. You're right. You know, that's huge. And the one side, then that can even develop into a one sided friendship. And we talked about that earlier. You're the only one putting in the effort to find them and reach out and do stuff, but they never turn around and give back long distance. And sometimes that really is a, a friendship staller, if you will, um, that you guys have moved to other areas, you know, your life's changed, you know, and you just don't see each other. Cause that was your, if you had the friend that you always go out with and now that friend has moved and you don't go out anymore. So are you guys friends anymore? Because that mm-hmm. friendship was based on, events which there's nothing wrong with that but you have to understand what type of friend that is and that becomes a little bit more pronounced later in life you know as they change and then the big one is marriage and whenever you too that's that's a that's a big one and there's two other areas you know can married friends have single friends and then women and men as best friends which are very testy topics can that can be very testy topics for when you're going into a marriage and when you're dating and what does mm-hmm. that mean for that friendship development progression how that oh absolutely you, all of that you know and you know with with that one in particular you know um I had a very good like a best male friend in college and when that person got married and really, well, before that person got married, but when that person really got serious with someone and I knew that this was probably the person that they were going to to get married to, I mm-hmm. adjusted myself. Right. And, and the reason why I adjusted myself is because I, out of respect, I didn't want her to feel like uncomfortable with our friendship. I didn't want her to feel like I was somebody that she had to worry about. Mm-hmm. Like I understood that you know, our friendship and the dynamic that we had had to shift. And mm-hmm. and it did. And, you know, I did that without prompting. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a situation like that, girl, do it without prompting. Somebody yeah. don't have to tell you. She not have to tell you that you mm-hmm. can't be like shift the level. And it's OK to shift the level. And you should, out mm-hmm. of respect, shift the level. And you should actually also, you know, and the opposite kind of happened with me in that, I wasn't even given the opportunity to shift my friendship. I was like, I was in this person's wedding and then they got married and it was straight cold Turkey. And I was like, hi, did you get the gift? And it's like, wait, Oh, we're not friends no more. But I was just in your wedding. Okay. So you didn't, I mean, I'm like, wait, what? it was like in a couple of matter of months, so to speak. Um, and that can be extremely jarring because if you've been helping mm-hmm. somebody you know, go into this portion of their life that, you know, you're, you're part of the wedding party. Granted, that's a whole other 27 dresses type of bridesmaid thing. Um, and I've been <laughs> in, <laughs> which I definitely have been in like tch, over 10 weddings and some of those people I'm still friends with some of them I'm not. And uh, a lot of it sometimes kind of changes when that person either per their spouse or just them. And mm-hmm. they don't think that they should talk to you anymore because you're single I mean, and I understand mm-hmm. that as a married woman, I get it. I understand it now. There's certain folks that they don't understand the 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 habitual line steppers when it comes to, you know, when you're married huh. and they're single and what's appropriate and what's not appropriate around you and your spouse or your partner. And that can really cause some serious tension with you in your in your partnership or your marriage. And it's not Ken, worth it. And let me just say and it's not, and let me just say this. <laughs> I appreciate all y'all spouses because I was the last of the Mohicans when it came down. <laughs> and, and y'all could have easily cut my ass off. <laughs> y'all could have easily cut my <sighs> ass off. And not because I was crazy or anything, but I understand like there are some people who get married and they say, you know, I prefer you not to hang out with your yes. single friends because yes. your single friends may have a different mindset right yeah then the friends that are married mm-hmm. okay and you know i do know that there's a time when half of us were married and half of us weren't and there were some single friends whose mindset was totally totally in a, a different place um but 
I'm glad and I'm thankful for that, that they understood that this friendship was deeper than that, mm -hmm. and that they didn't mm -hmm. ask y'all to choose and say, Zarifa got to go because she ain't <laughs> married and I don't want this bitch around because <laughs> I would have had no friends. <laughs> I had no friends. <laughs> Because I'm definitely <sighs> the newliest of the newlyweds. And I would have been sitting around here tooling my thumbs looking like, okay, boo boo boo. Like, what am I supposed to do now? So I appreciate y'all spouses. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is too funny. And we and I must say, speaking on that behalf of that, um, you know, you can tell which friends you, you hope that you can have around as a spouse and as the, you know, who you can have around your your spouses, if that's on a, if that's an allowed conversation between you and your spouse that you have had, because there are conversations I will say that I will have with my married friends that I will not necessarily have with my single friends because hello. Yes. Cause that part as things change, you know, it's not like you guys go out, you have an argument when you're single and then you stop talking to them for like a month, you know, and you just like, and your, your <laughs> single friend can be like, mm, Get him, girl. You know, you can go on and let's go to the club or let's go to this wherever. And your mindset is just not to sit and work through it. Where when you're married, you talk to your married friends, you'd be like, Oh, girl, yeah, mm, that just that's just one, that's just a Tuesday. And you just like, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's just a Tuesday? <laughs> and, 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 you, <laughs> and you know that you just can't be like, Wait, so I'm supposed to feel like this? Like, and you know, your married friends, and a lot of times we don't talk about this. You, they won't tell you certain things because they just want to wait and see how you deal with it. Because you don't want to put that in their head. They already <laughs> have a mindset like, "Look, I'm out. I'm gonna end up on Snap. I'm gonna end up on one of these dead <laughs> women shows. I'm gonna end up on what's the other one on OWN? I, I, there's another one. I can't remember. Uh, Fatal Attraction, whatever. Because they're like, if you haven't thought about. Um, engaging with your spouse in some side of uh, some sort of pillow fight or physical altercation, you just really haven't been married at some point. You just kind of, you know, sifting through life, <laughs> you know. But, but it's important that you you guys that you understand that and you have those conversations with your friends um, and with your spouse as to what you can and can't talk about. And your single friends also need to understand that you, as their friend, may change. Because now that you're you're married, certain things you may stop doing automatically and your single friends may be blindsided like I was. And you're just like, wait, what just happened? And they, you don't understand why this friendship, they stopped being friends with you and didn't tell you. And that's a whole other side right. of dealing with that, which is can be very painful and very hurtful because you're like, I was just there right. for them at this time. And now I'm not. You just don't want to be around. Right. And that that brings you into like, well, can you heal a broken mm -hmm. friendship? Like in the yep. situation you're talking about, is it can you heal a, a broken friendship? Well, the first thing I think when you when you talk about healing a broken friendship is, you know, you should probably just take some time to breathe it, right? Because yeah. through that grief process, you'll probably gain some clarity, right? And then you'll probably be able to determine and decipher what you need to do next. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing that, then you're able to really figure out what went wrong, right? <clears throat> you're able to kind of figure out, is there, is, are there things that you may have done, right? That, that lend, that went to the, the, the brokenness of the friendship, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then decide and determine if there's even a friendship to go back to. You may, through this grief process, realize, mm, you know what? I'm good. That friendship had its... It had its season, had mm -hmm. its reason, and all of those things are no longer valid. And I'm I'm okay to let it go. Um, and then I think this one is the most important. If you have decided that there is a friendship to go back to, can you have an open, mm. honest, and humble conversation? That's huge. That I think kind of keeps a lot of people from really mending their broken friendships because mm -hmm. some of us are so wrapped up into the ego. Let me tell yeah. you, ego and pride Woo. are the two things that will destroy any, any relationship. Okay. If you are coming into it with your ego and with your pride, I'm going to tell you right now, just stop mm. and don't even do it. Just Walk talk away. that friendship up and keep it pushing yeah. because your ego and your pride you let them talk for you, but you have to understand 
that those are lower vibrational feelings mm-hmm. and you're mm-hmm. going to go into it already negative with right. a negative mindset. You're already going to go into it defensively. You're already going to be going into it with a conversation of trying to counter whatever they're saying with something else yep. that maybe they've done. So they're like, well, this is what you did. Well, this is what you did. Well, mm-hmm. this is what you did. Well, this is what you did. And that kind of back and forth conversation not is not good. going to, to, to work. And the mm-hmm. friendship will, will remain broken. So if you if you can't have an open, honest, and humble conversation, it's not worth it. But also know that you can be willing to do that. And the person that mm-hmm. you were in this friendship with may not be at that level. Exactly. And if they're not at that level, you just got to walk away from it. Mm-hmm. Maybe you'll get back to that. But in that moment, you have to leave them where they're at. And you have to move forward. Exactly. Exactly. And... And piggybacking off of that, when you decide if you have to walk away and leave that person where they are, it brings to mind what are some ways to, what are some do's and don'ts of ending a friendship? So don't, this is outside, of course, if it's been a hostile situation, don't be hostile or aggressive towards them, you know, and you, if you need to cut off all contact cold turkey, try not to if it's that, in that type of valuable relationship that you've had over the years and if you just cold cold turkey and just become and ghost them, that is not cool. Don't do that. And please try not to end it over text or chat if you can. If you can, it's just it's just tacky and just inst- and it makes you kind of think. Well, what kind of friendship was this? If you can just stop talking to me over text, like nobody wants to get broken up like that. You don't want to get your fr- friendship broken up like that, unless it's that type of situation that calls for it. Because sometimes that's all you need mm. to say. You don't need to see that mm-hmm. person. You don't need to be in their energy. <laughs> don't need to be around them and that's for your benefit because you don't want to have you know end up any compromising situations so you know and don't have sally may over here tell this person fanny may that y'all don't want to be friends no more because that's just then you're bringing a third party into it and they don't need to be um it's just not appropriate at all some dues you know sometimes things just fade out and it's just you guys don't call each other as much and it, it avoids hurt feelings and you know, or reduce social interactions. I mean, you know, for COVID, this may have happened and been very beneficial for some people because they can't Hello. see their, some of them anymore. And it might be <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it might be like, you know, my life is pretty much better without that person. Hello. Not, you know, it's just you guys don't gel anymore. Try, you know, uh to have the talk like we had talked about and Z mentioned before. You know, do you can you go back and have a talk that is equally beneficial? And if you guys can put a goal in place of what you guys are trying to strive for, have you set boundaries? So if that person was the the habitual line stepper, do they understand what boundaries that they were crossing and which ones to stop crossing, you know, and that they're mindful? Because some folks may not even be aware that they're doing it just because they're just so that aloof. Does, yeah, but some people just don't live by a code. And, well, that too. Yes, exactly. You know, mm-hmm. don't understand girl code. Which right. I don't understand, but... Yeah, you'd be surprised, depending on their upbringing. Um, some mm-hmm. folks have no idea what girl code is. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's no, it's mm-hmm. out for self, survival of the fittest. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just saying, because you know, there are oh, some I know. folks that are oh, just I like, know. code? What's, what's that? Oh, oh I know. Whatever. I know. Like, mm-hmm. We all know somebody that just, there is none. And, you know, if you need to take a break, then hey, just take a break. Back away. And But like I said, you know, when I started out, if it is toxic or hostile or physically abusive or dangerous, that that's the time when you cut off all contact, change your number, you know, block them from friends on Facebook, IG, whatever it is you need to do. Um, And it's also hard, you know, when you do end friends, friendships, because your friends still may be friends with those friends, that person that you no longer friends with. And a complicated situation. it's a very, Z and I have both have been in that situation. So, you know, it's, it is very, uh, de- it's, it's a delicate, challenging, it's a challenging situation because you it can you be challenging mm-hmm. depending. Yeah. It depends on the level of maturity of the parties yes. involved. Right. True. I, True. you know, I can give you a, a very general story about how a friendship ended for me. And it was more, it wasn't through text, but it was through email Um, and you know, when it ended, it ended over something I didn't even do. Mm 
Like that was the crazy part about it. The friendship ended and it was over something I didn't even have anything to do with. It wasn't, it wasn't any, listen to me. I did nothing wrong, but somehow I just got thrown into the mix as, okay, you, you're just not somebody who I can be friends with. And I was okay with that, but I had to save my peace, mm. right? Um, and I realized in that moment that this was just, I felt that the person wasn't at the level of maturity that I was to really have the conversation that needed mm-hmm. to be had. And the things that really needed to be said still to this day haven't been said. And right. I'm okay with that because I know my truth. Um, but I also have to understand that your perception is your reality. And so mm-hmm. what you perceive to be the issue is going to be your reality. And there's no changing that unless, again, you're somebody who is not rooted in your pride and your ego, right? Mm-hmm. Because I can take responsibility for my actions, but can you say the same? Right. And when you really looked at, and when, when I dissected, the again, the friendship, I realized that the the issue wasn't even about what had happened in that moment. Mm-hmm. It was a, a year's worth of things that had gone on that really just never were addressed that just kind of came to a head in that moment. Mm-hmm. And at that moment, I was like, well, okay, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. And, right. you know, again, to this day, if I were to run into the person, if I see the person, it's not anything malicious. I wish that person well. But we just don't have to occupy the same spaces at the mm-hmm. same time anymore because it's just not necessary. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's it's not necessary. It, right. And I think to speak to that as far as the level of maturity, when you do have friends that are still friends mm-hmm. with someone that you're not friends with anymore, that also has to be, I think, when you communicate that amongst your friends, plural. Right. So that right. they understand right. where you stand with this person and that you don't they don't try to push you into situations that are not beneficial to anybody, especially the individuals who may not be gelling or getting along or what have you, um, just for the sake of doing it. Don't be, you know, you can be cordial, you can be respectful and, but you guys aren't going to go and kick it forever, but your other group of friends, when it's a mixed bag, have to also be mindful and respectful of the situation that you're in and try not to pursue something that you clearly have stated to your other friends that this isn't going to happen. But on the right. other side, if you do have friends and you're all t- together and it may have been a misunderstanding, your groups of friends can also be that bridge to get you guys back on track to be to, right. to you know, being better in sync. And this is how you become a good friend. Right. And this is these are some of the the, the things that you need to be a good friend. Right. You mm-hmm. need to actively listen. Right. Yeah. You need to understand that you have to respect boundaries. If you're sitting here and you're telling me that this is somebody that you don't want in your space. As a friend, I should respect that because I'm actively listening to you. And that's a boundary you just don't want crossed, right? Yeah. We have to learn how to show grace and empathy. So Um, important. It's very important. We have to learn how to ditch the judgment, right? That's that's part of being a good friend. You need to take stock of when you're having a conversation with your friend, if you're sounding judgmental. Are you giving a holistic view of what you think? Um, mm-hmm. they should be doing or on or on how you see the situation right. or is what you're coming off as judgmental, right? Are you and, wearing the friend hat or the I'm just listening hat? Right. And be mindful that some people are a little sensitive to that. Like mm-hmm. what I may think is judgmental, somebody else may not. But if you've known your friends long enough, you would know what they may deem to be a little judgmental and what they may not. Right. Um, don't talk about, you know, your friends behind your back. I mean, that's just that's girl code one right that's that's mm-hmm. part of the 10 commandments don't talk about your friends behind your back please if you're going to say something about them behind their back let it also be something you're not afraid or you to say in their face uh-huh. or you have said to them um but if you're talking negatively about your friend behind their back if you're being malicious behind your back are you really being a good friend hello i don't know hello i don't know i don't think you are i'm gonna say no right or 200 alex i'm gonna say no <laughs> Provide support when needed. And this is is key. Sometimes you think that you're providing support for somebody in a time when it's really not needed. Mm. Listen to your friends. Actively listen. They'll be able to tell you when the support is needed. Right. Mm -hmm. And and when it is needed, show up. Be present. Be there. Be present. If and and again, we all can use our friends for different levels of support. Uh, We have a friend who had a traumatic event happen in her life. 
she leaned on each of her friends for support for different reasons. You bought that friend ink because in that moment, that's all they needed. Right. She said, I just need you to bring ink. If you yep. want to support me in this moment, bring me some ink. And you that's did. So and you showed up. So yeah. that's those are the things that you need to do. OK, so important. So Be important. dependable. You were dependable. She didn't. She said she needed ink. You didn't come seven hours later with the ink. You came right. when she asked you. Mm -hmm. If you're helping a friend with a party, an event, and they say, you ask them, oh, what can I bring? And you say, oh, can you bring me some ice? Don't show up seven hours after the event has already started Please. with a cup of ice. Woo! Don't yeah. do that. Where they do that at? No. A whole cup. A whole cup. In, like, in, oh. in your cup. I, we stopped at Mickey D's in here. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I got the large with some cup. I got the large cup with some ice. Uh, you don't do that. Don't do please. that. Mm -mm. Um, Mm -mm. And we talked about this before in the friends you don't need. Don't compete. Why are you competing with your friend? I, that is something I don't understand. If this is your friend, mm. there should be no need for competition. No. It's all about support. If and, I'm, and I mean this in the most sincere way. If you have a friend that started a business mm -hmm. and you want to start a business, there's no need for you to compete. You can actually can collaborate with them. But sometimes I think we get so wrapped up into I got to succeed. This is what we were talking about back when we were talking about in our third, like, you know, being in our 40s and how like when we were in our 20s, mm. the need to succeed was at such a high level. Yeah. Right. That it kind of blinded us to everything else. Mm -hmm. There's no there's room for everybody to eat. It really is. There, there really there is. Could not be the whole crabs in a barrel. And no, there should not be that mindset. If you call yourself friends, if you call yourself a friend. And let me say this. We always say stay in your lane, stay in your lane. If you have a friend, your friend should be able to get in your lane and I should be yes. able to get in yours. And there should be no issue. Why? Because we're friends and mm -hmm. we off that. We're not about that. We're mature. You know, if I, especially in our like we've been friends for 20 something years. At yeah. This point. Why we why? What, there's no need to compete. Mm -mm. Everybody is doing well for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of everybody. I'm so yeah. blessed to have been able to see you all, f you know, from 17 to now. Till now. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's been a wonderful journey to see that. It has. Know, to see how we've all progressed and what we've been through, the highs and the lows. And Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I Absolutely. definitely got to gotta say, you know, to, to shout out to, to Z and one of our other friends that there was a time when I needed them. When I was really going through, I got some medical news and found out that, you know, I wasn't going to be able to have kids and stuff like that. And I just was distraught. I called them. By the time I got home from the doctor's office, they were there. Like, what's up? <laughs> They're like, what you need? They got me a whole little, like, spa bag. They got me a little thing for my eyes and, you know, like, the, you know, the little spa eye thingy. Um you know, and like a little journal and of Paris stuff because they know I like Paris. I mean, and that's and I didn't have to say anything. I just told them what was going on and they showed up for me and I could not articulate what I needed, but they were there and they showed up and that, you know, meant the world to me. Right. You know, so those type of things. It's, like It's important. You know, I, I even think back to when I had uh, my daughter and, you know, I, I talk about this a lot. I don't have my mom. I don't have my grandma. So that experience was a little emotional for me. But I, I was just trying to do everything by myself. I just didn't want I always feel like I'm a burden. So I don't ask for help. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I had her early. And so I'm type A. So I had a whole plan. <laughs> I was going to make all this food and freeze it. She had all this plan. <laughs> I was going to make all this food and freeze it <laughs> so that, you know, at the time, it was my fiance. When when it was time to to you know bring her home, he didn't have anything to do. I didn't have anything to do but take that food out of the freezer, put it in the oven, and call it a day. And it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I remember breaking down, crying, and sending you all a text. And I said, I don't ask for much, but can somebody just bring us some food? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. And if y'all didn't show up, I think Karen had a food chain, a calendar, mm -hmm. a booth for bring food when. We ain't, we were, when I tell you how grateful I was for that, because again, it took everything in me. I think I was down to eating like a, a, some cereal because I just was like, I just can't. I don't want anybody. I feel like a burden. Um, But 
you know, you really need your your girlfriends. Friendships mm -hmm. are very important, but it's yeah. also, like I said, very important to revisit the friendships that you have and just make the determination as to whether some of the friendships you have are healthy ones. Mm -hmm. if some of them, if, if it, again, look at it as a bank a bank account. Are you are you depositing as much as you're withdrawing? Yes. Is that person depositing as much as they're withdrawing. Or are they in the negative because you have overdrawn? Hello. They have overdrawn you and now you have nothing else to give. Because guess what happens? If you have a bank account that stays in the negative, what they do? Mm, they close, close your account. Close that shit up. And you may need to do that with some of your friendships. But mm -hmm. I hope that you don't. I hope that when you listen to this episode, it makes you just be even more thankful and more appreciative of the friends that you have in your life and so happy that you're at this point where you can, you have your tribe, you have your squad mm -hmm. and you understand that it is rooted in something that, you know, you know, nobody else may understand it get, but y'all do. And that's okay. Yeah. And that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll come back with the last sip of tea. And we're back, back with the last sip of tea with your hood Dalai Lama. Friends are the people who make you smile brighter, laugh louder, and live better. We all crave closeness with others. We need to know there is someone out there who gets us. Whether you have a small group of close friends or an expanded group of personalities, each of your friendships brings something new to your life inspiring you to see the world a totally different way, giving you a new shoulder to lean on and a new cheerleader to keep you feeling proud and motivated. This is why it's important to continue cultivating your friendships and learning what it means to be a good friend. And that's the last sip of tea with your hood Dalai Lama. Thank you all for joining us this week on Sipping Tea with Nat and Z. You can follow us on Instagram at Sippin' Tea, Nat and Z underscore pod. And on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Sippin' Tea, Nat and Z for upcoming podcast topics, guests and news. And thanks for listening and see you next episode where we will discuss the imposter syndrome and the superwoman complex. So enjoy your week. And remember, friends are like condoms. They protect you when things get hard. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. Thanks for being my friend. <laughs>